As I walk you through how I created this painting, I'll also talk about my favorite paints, art supplies, and ways to combat imposter syndrome. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Hello and welcome. This is Betty with Betty Frank's Art. Super happy that you are joining me here today. I am working on a 36 by 36 inch canvas with one and a half inches on the side. And as in typical fashion, I love to start with some mark making. This mark making has nothing to do with, you know, what it's going to look like at the very end. It's more of me connecting with my canvas and also just obliterating that white canvas staring back at me. And then I like to come in with some black paint. Now this black paint in this jar is one that I mixed several other colors into it. So it's not just black straight out of the jar, but more of a complex black with maybe some green in it and blues and whatever other color I decided to, to toss in there. And then I like to clean off my brush just with a rag and then go into adding some white so I can make gray right away. And this early in the process, I'm not really looking at composition, but yet subconsciously, I, I guess I, I'm always looking at composition, but not, not in terms of, you know, what is it going to look like at the very end, but rather looking at it in the sense of making sure that I've got some larger elements and smaller elements within my piece right from the start so that I can kind of Put down the foundation of having some of those possibly show up at the very end. So moving right along here, I added some yellow to that cup that I'm using, which is I think a yogurt cup, and created a, a green color. I usually like to start with either my warm colors or my cool colors, and at this point I'm not sure which one I decided to go with because I'm just adding yellow right now with the black to make a green and I haven't quite although I see my jars are uh, the lids are off on those reds back there it looks like possibly a parole red and quinacridone red probably so it looks like I am going to go with warm colors there we go I've started to add some in and the reason I like to do that is so that I can keep my colors clean. And right now they don't look so clean because my black isn't entirely dry. And I know my brush has been going into that. Here I'm trying to avoid some of those black areas and, and allow them to dry. But going back to, so the reason I like to do that is because I like to keep my colors bright and crisp and happy. And uh, happy colors happen when I don't mix my warm colors and my cool colors together. So that is my reasoning behind that. I discovered that many years ago and have stuck to it. Although I do like neutrals and this painting in the end ends up having, you know, quite a few neutrals in it. So I don't diss those neutrals. I think they are really important even when you like to do bright, colorful paintings like I do. They actually help make your paintings stand out even more. Let's talk about the paints I love to use. They are Nova Color Paints. And Nova Color Paints, they are a Southern California company. So they are a U.S. company. And they only have one location, and that's in Southern California. So they don't have distributors throughout the U.S. or throughout the world. And what that means is that everything ships from that location. So if you are in the U.S., the shipping is fairly reasonable and I want to say fairly only because ever since the pandemic the price to ship anything anything at all has gone up substantially and so um, shipping you know overseas is is really gone up a lot as well so anyway uh, Nova Color Paints love the quality of their paints the pigments uh, the consistency of them and they um, 
they are also affordable. Sorry, I paused a moment because I was trying to figure out what I was doing on the screen. Okay, and so I love their pricing as well. Now, I have partnered up with them. I've been using them for many years, and I have been sending folks to them for many, many years. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and recently, um, last few months or so, I have partnered up with them to create a bundle of paints, which is called Betty's Bundle. And it, it, it includes 15 of my go-to paint colors. So if you are unsure about what colors you want to pick because they have so many of them on their website that I know it can be um, a little daunting to try to figure out which ones to pick. And I know this because so many people have messaged me over the years saying, Betty, which paint colors are you using? Which ones should I try? And also Nova Color Paint themselves would get emails and phone calls saying, what colors are Betty, uh, what colors, <laughs> what colors are um, is Betty picking? Man, I am having a hard time talking right now. Okay, so anyway, Betty's Bundle is available. It's available in the four ounce jars, which is the smallest size, which I love that size for trying out colors. And then there's a pint and a quart. So I've got Betty's Bundle in the pint, uh, which is the smaller one that you see on my table there. And then the quart size, which is like that teal that you can see. So I'm gonna include a link down below. But again, if you can't find the link, just um, leave me a message in the comments below and I will be happy to send you that link. I came in here to dry some of this uh, layer here that I had going, just so I can move on. And it looks like I'm putting lids on my warm colors, which indicates that I'm probably gonna switch over to my cool colors. But first, before I switch over, I'm gonna come in with some mark making because I've got a couple of you know layers here and those initial marks are completely covered up. So it's nice when I can come in and just add some more marks at this stage. Staying loose, you can see I switched over to my left hand, my non-dominant hand, and I'm just using a variety of different tools, um, a pencil, regular pencil, uh, some crayons, uh, probably Stabilo Woodies, which are my favorite. Um, let's see, China markers also. This is a great stage where I can start adding the white China marker or any white. All right, taking the lids off of my cool colors here. What I love about my process is I have no idea what the painting's going to be at the end. And so it's this journey that each painting goes on. I go on this journey with each painting. And where it ends up, I never know until the very end when I am done. So in this particular painting, I did tend to stay with my cooler colors. So a, a lot of the um, blues and greens is what it ends up being with a little bit of the warm colors peeking through. And I've got a uh, scraper in my hand. It's not called a scraper, it's called something else. And for the life of me, I always forget what it's called. Um, anyway, it's um, a color shaper, that's it. I actually remembered this time. It's called a color shaper and it's like a spatula, um, a scraper type of thing. Uh, it's rubber and I love it because I can move paint around very quickly with it. So I was adding some paint here and there and scratching into that as well. So those big black lines decided to cover those up. That wasn't gonna work. And there's quite a bit here that I end up covering up as I move through this process using the cooler colors. I love making my own greens. So using like blue green or phyllo turquoise to make a green, I think they just, they make fantastic green colors. I also have the yellow green in a jar, but I don't use it very often. And when I do, I tend to put uh, some yellow to it so that I can make it, uh, I don't know, a little bit of a brighter green than, than what's actually in the jar. So greens are super fun to make. 
on your own. You don't need to buy individual jars of green. Just grab any blue and some yellow and mix them together. You'll get a warmer green if you add the Indian yellow to it and a little bit of a cooler green if you add the cadmium yellow to it. Super fun mixing colors. Those are one of the things that, that's one of the things I absolutely love doing is creating all of my own colors as I go. Now, the only pitfall to that is that if I create a color that I absolutely love, well, too hard to recreate it. And the main reason it's too hard for me is because I don't clean my brush. So whatever is on my brush, whatever previous color I had on my brush is, is included in that new color. And so it's very hard to recreate that. Sometimes I come close, but not an exact color. And, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I kind of like that. It's, it's unique and different each time. If you are enjoying this video so far and enjoying all of all or any of my videos, I would so appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up here. And also, if you can subscribe to my channel, that really helps me out a lot. The thumbs up really helps me as well because it tells YouTube's algorithm that you are enjoying this. And when lots of folks subscribe and give me a thumbs up, then YouTube serves up the painting, the painting not the painting, but the video of me painting to a lot more people. And so you're, you're helping out a bunch of other people by interacting here. Even commenting really helps me as well. So that YouTube again says, oh, people are liking this. They're commenting, they're uh, watching it. And then they start to serve it up to a lot more people. So it shows up in folks um, in their feed. Uh, especially for people who have not followed me before. So I love when I get messages on my videos that says, wow, you know, I've, I've never come across you before and I'm so glad I did. And those always make me super happy. So again, hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up, the like button, and hit the bell to be notified when I release another video. I, am, I usually release them every other Friday. I am trying now to release every Friday, so it's a bit of a challenge. I am including vlogs in my video releases. So a vlog is like, it's like a blog, but it's a video. So it's a vlog with, with the letter V, and it's, it's something that I just started doing, and I'm kind of having some fun with it. I just created one the other day that was my visit to Santa Cruz, California, where I met up with another artist and also delivered art to the gallery that represents me. And so it's a really short vlog, uh, which is great because I think my last one was almost an hour long, which I thought, you know, that's a bit too long. So this time I went the opposite extreme and went with a, a six minute vlog, <laughs> but it's, it's a fun one. It's short and sweet. And um, I take you on my adventures to Santa Cruz and to Capitola, which is just south of Santa Cruz. So hit that thumbs up, um, subscribe, or I should say hit the bell, and that way you'll know when that one comes out. I'm hoping to get that one released in um, another week or two. I like that lighter color of teal that I've got going on right there. Looks so good next to those darker colors. I'm using a, a long handled brush and I think this one is, it's not a really big brush and I'm thinking it's more like a, maybe a size 10-ish, 8, 10, somewhere in there. And I know for some folks it seems strange that, you know, when I'm creating such big art, 36 by 36, and then I come in with such small brushes, I like using the smaller brushes. I don't like coming in with a brush that just covers the entire canvas in, in one sweep. And that's just my style of painting. For you, you know, if you're not sure what kind, what size of brush to use, because I often get questions, you know, what size of brush are you using? Come in there and, you know, buy a variety of different brushes and 
buy not just you know the larger ones and smaller ones but also a flat a filbert a round and that'll give you the opportunity to try out different brushes and see what you like and what you don't like we're all very unique and different in the way we create our art and the way we we like to create art and so I think brushes is a very personal thing and I can tell you all the ones that that I like and don't like but that doesn't mean that you're not going to like them or, or or you may agree with me and not like them but I think it's something that you got to try out for yourself so that brings me to I do have a list of uh, my favorite art supplies which I'm I've got a link down below and if you can't find it, just leave me a comment. I'm happy to send you that. The link will take you to a page on my website. And from there, you'll go to either Amazon or to Blick. And one, whichever one you prefer or a combination of the two, if you prefer. So I list out my favorite art supplies there, as well as some other, other things on Amazon. I love Amazon because, you know, I can list even non-painting stuff on there, whereas Blick is very focused on just um, art supplies. All right, it's slowly starting to come together. Sometimes I even like it at this stage. But I hesitate to say that because if I looked at it up close, then I could see that it's definitely not done. But sometimes it looks pretty cool. All right, coming back another day here. Actually, I don't think it's another day. Hard to tell. I'm looking outside and I am loosely just putting down some marks. So definitely not done. There's going to be some more layers happening here. And I'm peeling back a China marker. I just did a video on how to peel those back on my Instagram channel. Or I guess Instagram isn't a channel, uh, Instagram page. So I'm looking outside and what I do here is I'm just looking at shapes outside and making those on my canvas. And I find that they are much more organic shapes when I'm not looking at my canvas because my hand is very practiced in making marks. I've learned that over the years. And there I was also for a moment, well, there we go. I keep switching back and forth. So I'm trying to use my non-dominant hand to really make some loose marks on there. But even with my non-dominant, I've practiced this so much that sometimes I feel like it's a little bit overly controlled. Now the other thing I like to do is hold it, hold the instrument closer to the tip of it, not not the side that I'm writing with, but on the other end. So like if it's a number two pencil, you know, I'm holding it where the eraser is and that keeps it a bit on the loose side. So what I was saying before is I'm not sure if it was a different day because I have a uniform, kind of a uniform when I'm at the studio of that shirt that I like to wear. And then I've got, um, looks like I've, I had a white shirt for a couple of days there. I always change when I get to the studio. And so I've got several shirts at all times in my studio to, um, to wear. And then after a while, I take the whole pile home, wash everything, and start again. Coming in here with covering up those dark black areas, and I'm going with more of a, it almost seems purplish, but I think it was kind of a dark gray because I felt the black was a bit too jarring. I didn't cover it everywhere. There's still tiny spots here and there that are standing out and even this part that I'm doing right now it looks darker than that gray that I was covering up and spoiler alert in the end I end up going back and even covering up some of those grays because I felt that it just didn't work 
with the painting when I was close to, to the end of it. So at this point, we're just a little over halfway done with it. And as I was pulling all of my videos together to create this for you, I realized that I've got the very end this time because my last video, I didn't have the end where I did my final mark making. <clears throat> However, on this one, I do have my final one on mark making, but I think I somehow lost like a video in between or, or just before the final mark making. And the reason I say that is because you'll see it go from a stage that it's almost done to, wow, pretty much done. So, but I'll show you a little bit later. I kind of did a side by side so you can see some of the changes that I had made. They weren't too many changes, but I think it was kind of obvious that I covered up a bit more of the darker areas. I like coming in with my brush and just kind of making some random marks with it that are not always up and down or from side to side, so horizontal, vertical, but coming in more at an angle that I had just done a moment ago. Lately, I've been getting messages, whether they're here on YouTube or on Instagram or Facebook, of they're, they're not people who come out and say it like this, but they say it in a different way. And I guess the topic I want to talk about is, is um, imposter syndrome. So as an artist, I think, I think a lot of us go through this and we don't come out and no, we don't always come out and flat out say, well, I have imposter syndrome. But we say it in different ways. We say it by saying things like, you know, I'm not really an artist or, you know, I don't really want to show my work because that's not, I'm, I'm not a good artist or I'm not good at what I do. Um, another way is, you know, well, you know, I'm not charging what I think I should because I, you know, I'm not a good artist. So those are all messages that, you know, we, we send to ourselves and we tell other people and, you know, they fall under that imposter syndrome umbrella. But I think a lot of it really comes down to a lack of confidence and just having self-doubt. And I believe we have that because when we are getting started, just like anything, you know, being an artist is, is just like any other skill that you pick up. When we're getting started, we're, we're not that good, right? I wasn't very good. Well, no, I wasn't good at all. It took me a long time to, to get good at what I'm doing. And, and I still have more to do and more to grow. But going back to, you know, when you're starting out, you're going to feel that way. And that I, I totally get that because I felt that way too. It took me years to be able to say I'm an artist and, and hold my head up high. And so you know, some of the things that, that we can do to help us shift out of that mindset is one for one practice, 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 and then practice some more. There is no substitute to practicing your skill, your art, your craft to get good at it. There, there's just no shortcuts about it. And so Spend that time, invest in yourself, invest in time to set aside time to create, to even to stare at your painting and think about what you want to do next. I mean, that's all very important and that's all part of the process of learning. And so that's such a key part of, of getting good and so, and in return, building up your confidence and removing that self self-doubt. Although the self-doubt, I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't ever entirely go away because as you're growing and as you're learning, 
you still that that'll still creep in. The other thing you can do is, and I think this is so important, is find your tribe. Your tribe of people, whether that's one person or a group of people, but it's people who understand you as an artist. You can't put that on your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend or or your partner, whoever it is, for them to be everything to you. And if they're not into art and they don't understand all of that, you know, even though they are supportive, they don't necessarily fully get where you're coming from and how you're feeling. But your tribe does. These are people who are going through the same journey with you, who are learning, who maybe are a little bit more ahead of you, or maybe at the same pace with you, or maybe even just starting and you've been at it for over a year or so. These are the people who really get you and understand you, and you can talk shop with them, whether it's materials and processes and techniques, or it's just the emotional side of, you know, feeling down when things are not going well and you need a little bit of a boost. So look for people who you can connect with in that regard. And I mentioned, you know, I was in Santa Cruz yesterday and I met up with um, an artist friend of mine, Andrea Garvey, who lives in Santa Cruz and or Santa Cruz area. And she, you know, she's one of those folks who has a very similar history as I do, a background as I do, which is corporate America. And then in our 50s, we turned to art and we made a career out of it. And so, you know, she's just one example of, you know, many other folks that I have connected with who, who get it, who understand, who, who have walked this journey with me in their own way. And we share so much about what it takes to be an artist, the the business side of it, the art side of it, the emotional side of it. Um, You know, I just can't say enough about finding that at least one other person or a few folks that you can meet up with on a regular basis. It doesn't always have to be in person. Um, You know, we've got Zoom. We learned how to Zoom, didn't we? Over COVID. So that's a skill I think a lot of us picked up and that's one way to do it. And, you know, it doesn't have to be somebody that lives down the street from you. They can be living across the country from you and you guys can still find a way to connect. So I highly encourage you to do that. And then, you know, the last thing I want to mention about, you know, the whole self-confidence and or lack of confidence and self-doubt is social media. I love social media. I mean, I, I wouldn't be where I am today in terms of sharing my art with the world if it wasn't for social media. But um, there's a downside to it, and that is the comparison game. And I did this a lot. I still do it. You know, I still look at other artists and, and say, wow, you know, they, they've, they're just, you know, doing so great, and I'm just loving everything they're doing. And then I look at my stuff, and I'm like, oh, I'm not there yet, or I don't feel like I'm there yet, and I think I could still grow, and I think I could still improve. And as much as, you know, seeing other artists create, I think is, is so important to our own development in terms of taking it in a positive way and saying, okay, I'm not going to be envious. I'm not going to be jealous, but I'm going to learn from what they're doing and push myself forward so that I am doing better or, or I am growing and I'm um, challenging myself to do better. So doing that, but, but the other thing I want to talk about here is not comparing yourself to other folks because, you know, sometimes I'll get messages and say, oh, Betty, you know, I just created just like you and I don't think it's working. Well, it it probably isn't because I've been creating like this since 2018, a little bit before 2018. Uh, 2018 is when I discovered that I was doing this style and I did a little bit of it just before that, but Okay, so I've been at it, and it's now August of 2022. I've been at it for a while. So I think you're being hard on yourself when you try to create like me or try to create like another artist once or twice or three times because that artist is much further along in their journey than you are. So don't compare your journey to their journey. You're on your own path, and you're going to move along at a different pace. 
So instead of comparing yourself to somebody else, look at where you have come from. Look at your earlier pieces. So if you've been creating for a number of years, look, go back a year or two and say, okay, where am I today compared to where I was last year or the year before or, you know, the years before that? I think that's the best way to do some comparison and evaluate, you know, am I moving forward? Am I growing as an artist? Is my art getting better? Is it deepening? Is it more complex? Is it uh, more interesting? Because I've been putting in the time and I've been doing the work and I'm not, you know, who cares what it looks like next to somebody else's? You know, I want to look at my own work that I've done and, and say, okay, how far have I come? Have I grown? And do I see that? And I think you're going to find in most cases that you do see that, that, that you have, if you've put in the time and you've been practicing and practicing and practicing, then you are going to see a difference. Guaranteed. Um, I had one of my students actually message me. This was before she became a student. And she said, you know, I really want to create like this. And I really want to take everything that I've learned from you. Um, I think she did one of my online and then she did my in-person. And I challenged her and I said, okay, go and create 50 go create 50 pieces. You know, they don't have to be 36 by 36. They can be, you know, eight by 10 on paper, go and create 50. And, you know, she came back to me um, shortly thereafter and she didn't do 50 yet, but she said she already saw the improvement in her work. And I could see it too. It, it was very obvious. So let's compare ourselves to ourselves, our prior selves and where we've come from and how far we've come and and cheer ourselves on and recognize the work that we're putting in and the time that we're putting in to, to create a better version of ourselves in terms of being an artist. So that's the challenge I'm putting out for you is to go out there and practice, 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 find your tribe, and then also look at the work that you've done before and compare yourself today to what, where, what you have done in the past and keep pushing yourself forward. All right, I got a lot done while I was chit-chatting, didn't I? Moving right along there. So as I mentioned earlier, I did come in with some neutrals in this painting. I really like the neutrals. I'm, there's a part of me that will always have a love for the bright, happy colors, but sometimes I'm, I'm just really happy with neutrals. They've got this very calming feeling to me, and I like that. So there's a bit, a little bit more work to be done here. And as I mentioned earlier, when we get to the end of this particular painting session, I think that's when I switch over and I was missing like one video clip of how I went from, from right about where we are here to where I was at the very end, but it was very close. And honestly, I was kind of stuck with this painting for a while and I just didn't know what to do with it. I kept staring at it and staring at it because I had other paintings that I was working on. And so it was kind of in a timeout for a while because I wasn't sure how I was going to finish it. And then one day I just picked it up and said, okay, it's time. Let me, let me come in here and let me address the things that aren't working for me. And some of the things I addressed were all those dark marks in there. I ended up taking those out because um, some of them just didn't work with the piece and that's what was bothering me about it. I've mentioned before that I'm a problem solver and I love looking at paintings, especially when I get towards the end of them, trying to figure out what isn't working, why isn't it working, and what can I do to fix it? All right, so I'm coming to the end of this clip here. Okay, so I came in here and like I said, there's a there's a video clip that I'm missing. I'm pointing to a few marks there that I don't like. I okay, so here's the previous one. 
the one where I just finished. And you can see the dark areas that I took out. A few dark areas I left in there, but like the ones at the bottom, they were just too much. The ones at the top, middle, they were just too much as well. And then here, I'm just coming in with some um, a kind of a green gold color because I really liked, I had it before and then I ended up putting a darker green or a grayish color over it. And then I came back in and I wanted to bring that back before calling it done. And you can see there's, you know, some pops of red through this piece that I saved from the previous layer. Oh, my daughter was in the studio that day. So I had her videotape me just kind of mixing my colors there. You know how that is for Instagram. It's always good to have these little videos that I could add, you know, to a reel or or in my stories. I'm going to dry this because I do want to go into my final mark making. One of the things about moving to my new studio is I'm just out of, I don't have some good habits that I used to have. Like one of them is I used to always scan my room to show you guys my whole studio. Totally forgot to do that at the end of this video. And the other thing, which I was completely shocked, I delivered this piece to Santa Cruz yesterday to curate it by the sea. And, and then I come here and I'm working on, you know, uploading this video so I can share it with you guys. And then I discovered I didn't even take a photo of this artwork, my final pictures. And see, I don't know where my mind was. I, I've been kind of scattered these past week or two because I was preparing for a show. I was preparing to deliver art to another gallery and here um, and to Santa Cruz. And then also next week I am heading to Croatia. So I'm trying to get all my videos done before I head out because I can't download or upload videos while I'm there. And so I think my mind is on way too many things. All right. So nope, not done yet. I guess I got the teal out and the blue-green. I must be fixing one more area that was bothering me. It doesn't even seem like I'm covering all that much. But for whatever reason... Oh, I'm doing drips. That's what I'm doing right there. I see. Sometimes I like to do drips when I have like a solid area in, in a bottom corner and just do some drips so that it's not just... A solid area anymore. It's got a little bit of interest happening there. All right, so once that's dry, I will come in with some of my final mark making. So what I ended up doing is I contacted Melissa at Curated by the Sea where I delivered this art yesterday and I asked her if she could please take a photo and send it to me. And luckily, just as I was getting ready to start doing my voiceover here, she sent it to me via text and I'm including it at the very end. However, you'll notice at the very end, the whites here on my painting look white, whitish, grayish, but in the photo that she sent me, they look more creamy. And that's because she took the picture in, in her gallery space and the lighting is different there than my my. Uh, studio here or you know it'd be different if I took a photo of it outside so you'll notice at the very end the, the colors are off just a little bit my final mark making much more intentional than at the beginning although I do like to do some scribbles as well but here I'm doing some marks I like to get the sides as well so I, I'll use pencils here crayons and a lot of these are, I'm using water soluble marks. And therefore that means I need to come in with a fixative spray to seal those marks. And also after that, then I like to use Liquitex varnish to seal the whole thing and, and you know do the UV protection and all that. So I'll include a link here. I've got a new video coming up, but not sure if I'm going to include my new video on varnishing or my older one, but um, I will include something here that will, um, I've got a new one that I just created and it goes into how I do that for 
um, to a couple of smaller pieces. My older video from a few years ago is just as good. I just wanted to do more of an updated one because I use a fixative spray and in the other video I used a spray varnish to seal my marks. That's really the only difference. Now, the other thing I like about using these crayons is I can rub them with my fingers a little bit and make them more, what I call, more painterly looking so that it's not just a mark, but it's kind of rubbed in and softened out a bit. And there I'm doing some scribbles. That's a Stabilo Woody in my hand. My final mark making, very subtle. You'll notice that only when you walk up close and not from a distance. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching this video all the way to the end, which we're coming up on. And again, you know, I'd love for you to subscribe and hit that thumbs up and hit the bell as well to be notified of future videos. All right, so that was the photo of the final piece. And here's one of my last screenshots from the video. Thank you again. So appreciate you, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. All right, wishing you a super fabulous and creative day. Take care.